Hi everyone, uh, thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the multiple challenges of adapting a board game to digital platforms. So first of all, a bit uh, of, of my background. So I started to work in the music industry, then work for uh, Empire Interactive, a PC and console game publisher. Then I joined Gameloft uh, back in 2005 and uh, had the opportunity to work on the the first iPhone games, when the first iPhone came out in 2007. Then I worked for Orange. Um, then I had my own business, uh, mobile uh, consulting business, um, specialized in mobile marketing. And uh, end of 2015, I joined Asmode Digital uh, as a, a chief commercial and marketing officer. <laughs> And uh, Asmode Digital is a, a subsidiary of Asmode, uh, which is the worldwide leader of uh, board game. So um, Asmode is known for, uh, for its board game. So I'm sure uh, most of you have played some uh, of our games. Uh, it could be uh, Catan or Ticket to Ride or Pandemic Splendor. So basically, we we have, uh, I think, uh, almost 1,000 uh, board games in our catalog, in the physical board game. And we, we, we have board games for any type of audience. It could be a family, casual, expert, uh, mid-core player. So our, our ambition, our objective is to, you know, to become um, uh, you know, the, 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 the leader in the, the board game, also on the physical side and on the digital side. Um, in the past two years, 2016 and 2017, we've been very busy in building um, a catalog of mobile games, uh, which are all adapted from physical board games. So as you can see, um, you know, we, we had uh, uh, the opportunity to launch uh, Splendor, Pandemic, uh, Pathfinder, Adventure. So this is a catalog of games uh, that we've been um, uh, developing and publishing and distributing over the last two years. So um, what, what I'm going to tell you first is um, to talk about the renaissance of board games. So this is um, a video that we made from um, a show uh, which is called Spielessen, uh, which is a show taking place every year in Germany, which gathers more than 200,000 people. So what we experience today is really uh, a renaissance of board game where we see year after year the market growing steadily and today uh, so this year the board game market will uh, account for 10 billion uh, uh, dollars so it means it's one tenth of the video games market but it's you know growing and what you need to know about the board game market is the the core audience is more between 25 and 35 years old audience so, and I just, you know, I'm sure you know some of these games, but, you know, Catan or Ticket to Ride, they are games which sold over, you know, uh, 25 million units for, for Catan, and Ticket to Ride is uh, above 10, 10 million units. So, for, for board games, they are really massive success and massive hits that, um, you know, are distributed all over the world, and that are kind of a symbol of the renaissance of the board game in the, the last 10 years. So the, the renaissance is also digital. So we see that, you know, if you go on the, the, the mobile app store, you, know, we, you will find almost uh, 1,000 um, mobile board game already. Um, and it's already a, a five, $500 million market on mobile. So. Um, what does it take to, of developing digital adaptation of board games if we want to all take advantage of this renaissance? Um, what we, we found out uh, is some you know, very obvious uh, challenges and differences from, with video games. First, what you, you need to know is for, for, um, for a board game, the life cycle is very long. If you compare it with the video games or mobile games, you will see that a game like Tiketoa or Catan, they are going... They have been launched like decades ago. So Catan has been launched in 95. So 95. And Ticket to has been launched in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2004. So it means that you, know, you, have, you can take advantage of a very long uh, life cycle of the physical market. 
um, then you already uh, have some uh, uh, elements to start from when it comes to adapting a, f a physical board game to digital. So you have the rules, you have the, uh, the universe, the theme, so you, you, don't, you don't start from scratch, so to say. Then um, they, they are, there, is a, there are a lot of challenges in terms of UI and uh, technology challenges because what, what you want to do when you adapt a, a board game to a digital platform is you want to make sure that you keep um, the integrity and you are kind of uh, taking the rules of the physical board game into account to make sure that you have uh, you know, the right adaptation. And uh, what is interesting as well, um, if you don't start from scratch from a development point of view, but also you don't start from scratch from a community, from a player point of view. Because if you think of the physical board game, they already have a, a community of players, of engaged fans that really want to, to continue to play over the years their, their physical board game. So this is, these are players that we can leverage on when we uh, decide to adapt a board game uh, to digital platforms. So a couple of learnings that we learn on um, adapting a board game to mobile and PC. Um, first, it's, um, you have to think um, about the, the AI. You know, it's AI is very important. You have to have a robust AI because the players, if you, if you tell someone who has been playing Ticket to Ride, uh, the physical version for years, and is gonna be uh, playing the, physical, the digital version, then he should have you know, what it takes in terms of AI if he, if he plays you know, uh, solo. So the online gaming is also quite challenging because you have to make sure that you know, there is no uh, unbalanced uh, way of playing the games if someone is, uh, you know, is leaving uh, the game or is taking too much time to, to play his turn. So that's, that's one of the obvious challenges. Then what I was just mentioning is the integrity. You can't revolutionize uh, the gameplay because you have to stick with the, the rules uh, of the physical board game. And then the user interface is also a challenge because you have, a lot, of course, a lot of less space on different screens. So I give you the example of Ticket to Ride. You see on the physical version, you know, it's big. So you have uh, uh, enough space to, to have all the elements of the games. Um, so then on tablets, it, it's tricky, but on mobile, it's even more tricky. So that's, that's one of the challenges, is really to optimize the UI to make sure that the, the experience uh, uh, goes well when it's on, on digital. Um, another example uh, of Carcassonne is the game that we uh, launched uh, end of last year. So we, we wanted to introduce a 3D view to enrich the overall experience because we thought, you know, it was, you know, not enough um, for the players to have a 2D view. That's why, you know, we said, okay, we have to take into account the, um, the level of expectation of the digital players when, you know, adapting Carcassonne uh, on mobile. And another example, which is quite interesting, is Splendor. So Splendor is also a, a very well-known uh, board game. Um, and what we did to make sure that we would have a, a kind of serious solo uh, mode, we created uh, exclusive content based on the universe and the characters of the existing uh, physical board game to make sure that we will have something um, you know, consistent uh, to offer to, to the players. Because when you play a mobile board game, you will play it you know, most of the time uh, alone. You know, when, you know, and not with, with other, other people. So that's why we, we did that. Um, also, um, maybe some of you uh, know that, but we launched uh, last March uh, the first um, um, board game in virtual reality. So we, um, it was Catan. Uh, so Catan, as uh, you know, we, we talked about earlier, is a you know, massive hit, is a modern classic board game. And we launched the game uh, in, on Oculus. And uh, what we, we learned by developing uh, with uh, Experiment 7, which is the, the developer of the game, is you need to focus on four pillars to make sure that uh, 
you bring um, a compelling experience of a board game in VR. So the space is very important. Um, the presence of the player is also very important. The interaction of the players can have when playing uh, is important. And also, you have to work on a special user interface as well, uh, adapted to, to virtual reality. So give you some example. So what we wanted to do for Catan is to really um, give the sense to the player of space and to, to enhance the immersion when you know, uh, starting to play uh, Catan. So basically, the, the player uh, can invite other players to play the Catan as they were playing like in the physical world uh, around the table. So that's why we, the, the, the studio Experiment 7 you know, did uh, really focus on developing the right environment and create this immersive, uh, this immersion when first, you know, starting the game. So what, what, they, what we also uh, try to, to do is to create a presence by using hands. So you see hands when you basically throw the dice or hold the, the cards. And we also uh, add a special voice so to really to reinforce the sense of presence in, in the game. Um, also, we talk about player interactions. So we, we, we thought really that we, we should enhance also the different interactions when playing the game to make the overall uh, experience of playing uh, greater. And um, the last, the last uh, thing that we, we, we focus on is the interface. So the interface is quite different from, um, from the, the physical games, basically. Another learnings from developing, starting to develop board game on console. So it's also um, quite new for, for us, but digital. So it's, uh, we, are, we are starting to, um, you know, to, de to develop some of our games on, on console. So what we, what we think today uh, so I can't, uh, you know, I can't tell you more because we are in the process of uh, starting to develop a board game on console. Is basically we have um, found out that we need to take advantage of all the capabilities of each console. So if you take the example of the PlayStation or the Switch, uh, you will have a different ways of uh, utilizing. Uh, the controllers, or if you take, for instance, the, the social feature or the local play, then it, it will have impact on the way that we want to define the adaptation of the physical uh, board game to the console. So what, also, what we also found out is the, um, the expectation of the console player are not the same uh, as the, the players of the physical board game. So we need to make sure that um, for people who don't know the board game and the people who own a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch, that they perfectly understand you know, the mechanics uh, of the games and how basically they will, um, they will, they will, play, they will have to play the, the adaptation. And again, the UI, the user interface, uh, needs to be really adapted and customized to, for each console because that's not going to, to be obvious uh, for to have the same UI uh, for the Switch, for the PlayStation, and for the Xbox. So that's, the, that's one of, uh, that's our learnings. Hello, um, I'd be really interested to hear how do you see the demographics of your users when you, ha when you go to the new platforms? So do you see the same people who are playing the board games at home, the physical board games? also going for the console, PC, or mobile, or do you see a new extended audience? And what are the social features as board mm. games are usually played with friends or family? Yes. How, how is that kind of behavior yes. okay. on the digital? Yes. So um, at Asmode Digital, we, we, are, uh, we have a process to, um, to assess the, um, the potential of adapting a physical board game to any of the platform could be a mobile, PC, console. And what we, we are doing is we do um, uh, a lot of uh, market research, focus group, to make sure that we understand uh, the needs and the expectation of you know, someone who owns a switch or a mobile in terms of uh, 
you know, playing his beloved board game on this platform. So, uh, and with regard to the social feature, what we, we usually uh, have experienced is um, the chat is also very important for some of the games because it brings a, uh, an additional uh, component of the overall experience of playing online, for instance. And we also have um, uh, a build a community um, around uh, all the games that we have uh, to make sure that you know, uh, if I play one game, so my friend will know that I play this game, so I can invite them to play and to join me uh, you know, to the to the game I'm just playing. At. Okay. Um, how do you teach players to play complex board games um, when attention spans for mobile, especially, is so small? So what we our work. Our, uh, the, the work in adapting board game uh, from physical to digital is uh, really based on uh, making sure that we, we, we have enough tutorials for these complex games that are available when you, you, you start uh, playing the game as a first time user experience so you understand all the complexity uh, of the game and then you can really play the, the, the game itself. Are so they tutorials as in pop-ups or is it like a demo mode and you get rewarded for doing the demo mode or something? So we, we in, in most of the games, we really invite or strongly invite the players to go through the tutorial and they will find out by themselves that if they don't do the tutorial and if they don't know the game from, from the physical version, they will be very difficult for them or we take more more time for them to understand how to effectively play the game. And does the tutorial have an, 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 an AI component, or is it just a staged game? No, it's a, there is an AI in the tutorial as well. Okay. So, because that's why I, I, you know, I was mentioning that the importance of building a robust AI uh, in different parts of each game, so that it's, it's so typical for, for digital board game. We can't really uh, skip that. It's a, it's really uh, the core of our 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 work of adapting. Uh, but one of the key game. one of the key hurdles which you've got to overcome. Yeah. 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 Hi. Um, what different monetization models have you tried, and, um, and and what works best? So we are we are a bit different from uh, most of the the digital game publisher. So we believe that the, the premium uh, business model is, is still um, valid and uh, profitable for us. Uh, one of the main reasons is, I was mentioning about the, the long life uh, cycle of the, the board game. If you think about the physical board game, and they are selling for decades, and then the digital adaptation really uh, kind of benefit from the longevity of the physical board game. And the other way around, because we see that when we launch a digital version of a board game, like take the example of Ticket to Ride or Splendor, we found out that the physical sales, you know, uh, did uh, increase because of the of the of the f digital version. So it's a kind of virtual circle we really want to achieve when launching, you know, a digital adaptation from a board game, and and because of that, we. You know, after if you think you know on a long-term basis, it makes more sense for us to to go uh, premium, and also uh, what we what you what you know as well is for some platform like console, the the premium business model is not as uh, popular and widespread as on, on mobile, for instance. So. Do you find any cross-promotion between your paper and uh, digital games work? So, for example, out-of-the-box downloads for the, the digital version of the game yeah. or whatever? Yeah. What, what, um, for Asmode Digital and Asmode as a group, um, we, we call it uh, the, the digital marketing. So, very, very simple example of that is when you buy a physical version of the game, so you get... Uh, a promotion of the digital version, or when we do, when we do um, a, a special campaign with a retailer, could be Target or uh, you know uh, 
another board game retailer, then we sometimes we propose incentives. So you buy the physical version of the game and you get a discount of the digital version. Or within uh, each of our digital games, there is a more game feature where you have uh, some visibility for the board game. So we are trying to multiply all the cross-promotion opportunity to make sure that, again, we uh, kind of build this virtual circle between, uh, between physical and digital. And most importantly, the, the, the digital will never uh, cannibalize the, the physical. We just want to bring complementary experience to players starting from the, the board game, basically. Okay. Um, a lot of the board games that you're talking about, Ticket to Ride, Splendor and so on, have got quite a short play length. There are games in your portfolio like Twilight Struggle, yep. which are bigger, heavier games, yep. and there are other games like Terra Mystica, which uh, other companies have tried to port. Yep. Do you think the future lies with those lighter recreational games, or is there an ambition within Asmodee Digital to try and crack the big game on digital? I think for Asmodee Digital, we have the same uh, strategy in terms of the, the roadmap and in terms of reaching uh, the audience. So as on the physical side of the business, we want to... Um, we want to target any type of audience. That's why, you know, we, we launch uh, Double, for instance, on mobile, but also we have, as you say, Twilight Struggle, but we have Game for Family, Ticket to Ride, Splendor, or Pandemic. So we really want to kind of become universal in our approach and, uh, and kind of rep want to replicate, you know, the success we had on physical onto digital. How, how much of your um, development is in-house, and how, how much do you outsource? Um, we have three different uh, development teams in-house, and uh, the rest of the development is done uh, externally. So we have, um, we have built a network of partners um, that share the same passion for board games like we do, and also we understand you know, all the, the challenges of adapting a <laughs> physical board game to, to digital. So how how did you join that network? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we can talk about that later. So I would I would just want to finish off some um, a recap. Um, you know when when it comes to adapting a board game to, uh, to to digital. So focus on quality. So I think it's uh, it's obvious. Um, keep the integrity, the rules clean and not dirty. Uh, it's important. Um, the the experience, the immersion is is you know is key. Technology, as we, 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 we talk about, about is also uh, important. And we have to create exclusive content as well for digital, uh, for digital players uh, and because they have different behaviors and different needs. What you should not do is really, you know, especially for you know, complex board game, try you know, to copy 100% you know, the analog game. It won't work. So you have to think about simplifying uh, some flaws, the UI. Um, you sh should really not neglect the AI. So I was mentioning that AI is key. And also the onboarding. So the first time user experience, especially for people who don't know the physical board game, is key. That's why we, we are really, uh, you know, s spending time, investing uh, time in developing a tutorial for each of the games. So to make sure that everyone can play uh, any type of games on digital platform. Thank you. Thank you very much.